underappreciated and often outright maligned, some familiar artists from days gone by are finally getting their due. Serena Altschul has the then and now. In the 1970s and 80s, New York experienced a creative explosion like no other. And most New Yorkers just hated it. I despise graffiti. It just depresses me to look at it. Absolute filth. Graffiti and street art was out of control. While New York City didn't start graffiti, it's the city that made graffiti famous. Today, New York's bad old days are being celebrated. LL Cool J was there, so was Spike Lee. All at the opening last month of Beyond the Streets, the largest exhibition of graffiti and street art ever produced. I was obsessed with graffiti as a kid and I still am. You still are. Absolutely. Ex-graffiti artist Roger Gastman is the show's curator. I want people to come here and understand the true birth of graffiti, the true birth of street art, but at the same time celebrate the artists that worked on the street and have gone on to have incredible studio practices, gallery careers, museum careers. For weeks, a team of designers, carpenters, and artists worked feverishly to put together the show in a brand new building that sits on Brooklyn's old industrial waterfront. The exhibition features work from some 150 artists, including Shepard Ferry, the Gorilla Girls, and Kenny Scharf. Some, like the late Keith Haring, are superstars. Others are anonymous because doing graffiti and street art is still considered a crime. We're not under arrest for graffiti in the subway. In 1982, the then famous Herring was even arrested while accompanied by a CBS News crew. Of course it's vandalism and it is a crime and that is what's so interesting about it. If New York made graffiti famous around the world, yeah, just... it's thanks in no small part to photographer Martha Cooper and her landmark 1984 book. In the late 70s, I met a young boy who showed me his notebook and he explained that he was practicing his name to write on the wall. I just thought this was a very interesting phenomenon that kids had their own art form, that they understood and that adults didn't, and I felt I had been let into a secret society. A member of that secret society was Leonard Hilton McGurr. Meet Futura 2000. He's what's known in the graffiti underground as a writer. He was featured on CBS News in 1981. I don't want to always be writing on subways. I would personally like to, to flourish as a graphic artist. And he has. His work now sells for thousands of dollars. The graffiti culture spoke to me in terms of identifying who I was in this jungle, you know, the zoo of growing up in New York. He just finished a collaboration with fashion designer Virgil Abloh. The view has changed over time, right? I mean, we don't look at street artists and graffiti artists as criminals. It's funny how we have softened our opinion. All the people who are inclusive in this story are just pushing the boundaries. And so, of course, people are embracing it because, quite frankly, it's a relevant art form. Street art and murals have become the great gentrifier. People come to the neighborhoods to see it now. There's tours for graffiti, there's tours for street art. Even the South Pacific Island of Tahiti hosts a street art and graffiti festival. Travel to Denmark and you might see the work of artist Huskmit Noun. And here's the installation of Australian husband and wife duo Dabs Myla. From New York, around the world, and back again, graffiti really has gone beyond the streets.